you know, if mixing gets difficult, if you're struggling to get a loud master, then yeah, I want you to watch this video and be inspired on uh, yeah how to deal with that issue and how to get loudness. Hey, what's up everyone? So by far the number one subject that I get asked the most questions about is how to achieve loudness in mastering. There's not a simple answer to the question, but there's definitely a couple of very strategic and effective ways to achieve a louder master in the end. Now, in this video, I want to go over a couple of those techniques that yeah, just work very, very good. And before we're going into this, it's important to know that this project is a mix that I've done but the master is just for demonstration. So I'm going to add a lot of processing, going to let you hear a lot of techniques, how they sound, how they interact with each other, and basically have a sonic brainstorm of what you can do to achieve a loud master. Let's quickly have a listen to the track that we're using for this demonstration today. Super cool track, it's Sam Collins together with Take Note, Pulse, super cool upcoming track, so keep an eye out on that. So let's dive right in with the most important thing, which is the balance. If your track has a good balance, and then I mean not only a tonal balance, but as well a dynamic balance. So if you have a controlled low end, if you don't have very sudden peaks, especially in the low end, that's already super important. If your track sounds loud, even when you play it at a really low volume, because the tonal balance is present and yeah, is clear, then that's already a very, very good starting point to begin with if you want a loud track. If you have a track that's way too bass heavy, your limiters will start to distort way quicker as when you would have a mix that has a controlled low end. And yeah, it really already starts there. So before we're diving into techniques, I wanted to have said that, that balance is extremely crucial when it comes to achieving loudness. Then I'm adding to that, that your RMS already needs to be at a good level, ideally. So your crest factor needs to be as high as possible. And of course, you don't want to over push it, but if there's too much dynamics in your track, then it can still sound like a cool track, but keep in mind that achieving a higher perceived loudness, yeah, is very likely to be way more challenging that way. What's really important as well to keep in mind is that if you're pushing for loudness, that you're really bringing out everything in the mix. So if you have a bad gain staging structure, meaning that you're going way too hard into plugins, unintentionally clipping in a lot of places. That's what you want to avoid. Why? Because all these artifacts and distortion adds up. So it's really important to keep a good and intentional gain stage happening in your mixing and mastering session. So starting with the first technique, this is a preset in Pro MB. It's called tighter lows. You can select the zoom here, if you're doing it at 3db, as you can see super in depth what you're doing. I'm using this plugin at linear phase, four times over sampled with look ahead on. In this example, I'm going to show you how one dB of compression sounds and what it does to the mix. So that's what it's doing to the low end. And if you do it in the mix, it sounds like this. What it's doing is it's tightening up the low end a little bit and it's also decreasing it a little bit in overall volume. 
So if we're going to compress this with this limiter, then I'm going to show you what's the difference uh, with base compression on and without. So in this example, I wasn't really listening to what sounded best. I was just showing you the correlation between gain reduction levels in your limiter and compression levels on your low end. If I smash the low end all the way down, you could see that the limiter almost had nothing to do. And when there's a lot of bass, your limiter has a way more difficult job. So control your bass. And one of the ways to do that is Fab Filter Pro and B. Of course, you can use a dynamic EQ like uh, Pro-Q3 as well, or you can use Soothe for this, or you can use Gulfos for this, or you can use Low End Focus for this. There's multiple ways, but just make sure that your bass is in control. One way as well, but I'm not the biggest fan of that. If I'm doing it, I'm uh, loving the SSL high pass filter but putting a full high pass filter on your master yeah can provide a lot of headroom as well if you do that i would advise putting a pro cue at linear face and really only doing it when it's super needed because for example the low end is way too overwhelming next up is your limiter in this case i'm using ozone 11 maximizer and a couple of things are very important here. If you want to go for maximum loudness, don't use TruePeak. I am, however, using TruePeak because it prevents the master from clipping, especially on cheaper devices like an iPhone or any cheap speakers. It will keep it clean, social media, stuff like that. If TruePeak is active, your master will sound better there. However, if you're doing a master only for DJing, then yeah, feel confident without the true peak activated then character in this case i'm going for extremely fast release time it's at one faster means clipping slower means very slow what you can do is even automate this so if you have a break you can go for a slow release time if you have a drop you can go for a faster release time the faster it is, the more open your master will sound and the more aggressive the limiting will sound. So if you yeah, go for extreme fast settings, be intentional and have a good listen. How you can very easily listen with the Ozone 11 maximizer is through the Delta mode. Let me bypass upwards compression so you can just simply only hear the rest that it's doing when limiting. Yeah, so how I set it up, I was listening with Delta to the limited signal. So exactly you can hear what the plugin is doing. 
I was trying to get the right release time. In this case, one I already knew would be super effective. Upwards compressing. So we're pushing down a lot the peaks in limiting. But with upwards compression, you can bring up the quiet part. So yeah, it's just a big loss if you forget this function because why are we trying so hard to push down the loudest levels if we can simply bring up the quietest and that way increase our crest factor and get us closer to a uh, loud master that's a super clever function and i love how it sounds in 11 maximizer soft clip just quite aggressive saturation there in the soft clipping circuit of this plugin and uh, yeah in this case we're going for loud so 10 percent does the trick transient emphasis basically emphasizes the transients basically transient shaper before the limiting process happens in ozone 11 maximizer why did they add this feature because they want you to be able to emphasize the transients so the transients won't be killed in the limiting process then stereo independence 50 percent in this case i love what it does to the stereo image because it's 50 percent independent what does it mean if it's at a hundred percent the right and left channel of the limiter will react 100 percent separate the lesser the percentage the lesser they are separated in the real world the sound difference is mainly that if you have a higher stereo independence the stereo image feels a little bit more alive and if you have a lower stereo independence the overall stereo image feels a little tighter and more focused so i like it at 50 percent for this track because those synths are really like white and nice and i like to maintain a little bit of the movement there and yeah retain that width that this mix has then using saturation on your master let's by the way see where we're at with this mix So it's at about minus four uh, RMS. We can easily push harder into the limiter, but let's go and add saturation in parallel. I'm using FabFilter set in two. It's in the default preset at Subtle Transformer, 100% drive, 100% mix, high quality and linear phase. I'm going to shape the tone here and then I'll simply blend in the amount of wet signal that I want and that I think sounds good in this track. So what I'm trying to do here is shape a very different tone on the master. The 100% wet signal is yeah, super present, super aggressive, lacking a lot of low end. And what I want is to blend a little bit of that into my current signal that's way more bass heavy. And that way shape not only the tone but as well the dynamics of the track. because. The blended signal will have a lot of harmonics making the signal way more fat and way more easy to get loud. So let me just blend in a little bit of this.
really like what it does there. It makes the master sound a lot cleaner, a lot more present, less muddy and closed down. I, I really like it. And Saturn II Saddle Transformer just sounds incredible. And I've only used about 25% uh, in this case. So as I said earlier, this video is just a demonstration because I'm using a lot of processing on this master. But yeah, make sure to keep in mind that it's always very important to be intentional with whatever processing you add. So this video is just to show you what's possible. And yeah, I hope that you can get some inspiration from this for your own uh, tracks. All right, next up, Oxford Inflator. This is extremely powerful. However, you need to activate band split when using it on your master. Let me show you the difference that this simple button makes. It's simply splitting up the frequency bands, making Oxford Inflator react way better to complex material. Here, I'm going to uh, AB the band split before and after with you. sounds so good this plugin is really mighty it's uh, super unique I don't really know any plugin that exactly sounds the same and especially on dance music it's just so powerful just make sure to activate band split I showed you this super extreme example where I was pushing it way too hard and it starts completely destroying the signal if band split is off so um, yeah, it's, it's super important to switch that on if you're using it in your master. Then parallel compression. Let me A-B this for you with the actual analog Wes Audio NG Bus compressor, but you can use a simple uh, Cytomic the Glue or your built-in um, yeah, glue compressor or any SSL type compressor. I'm going to set it up with a quite extreme ratio of four, quite fast attack, 10 or slow, it's how you uh, see it. But for mastering, this is, I think, quite fast. Fastest release your compressor has. Most uh, plugins, I think, are limited to 0.1. The NG bus, the analog NG bus compressor. So this is an analog um, compressor controlled via plugin. Can actually go to zero, 0.05 which is extremely fast but this is super important I'm going to only blend in a little bit and let me show you how that sounds So you can hear that this beefs up the signal even more. In the beginning it was pushing a bit too hard uh, into the rest of the mastering chain. So I lowered the input eventually to minus one. And keep in mind I'm using extreme settings just to demonstrate how to get loudness. 
you know, if mixing gets difficult, if you're struggling to get a loud master, then yeah, I want you to watch this video and be inspired on uh, yeah, how to deal with that issue and how to get loudness. So I just wanted to show you a ton of ways to do that. So the next way is with EQ. And although I've showed you the Pro MB trick where you just compress the bass, this is basically the same, but then with EQ. Let me bypass the Mach EQ here. You can do it in the plugin as well. I just really love this unit. And the setting is as follows. I did two clicks of the sub decrease, one click up on the 2.5K. It's at two on the 40K airband. And yeah, it's uh, similar on the right side. I'm using this in mid side, so that's why I set it up on two sides. Let me A-B this for you and you can hear the tone shift and how much easier the mix is to get loud with the Mach EQ activated. If it's on, this master can be way louder LUFS wise. Just keep in mind, that's not always what you want, but this video is about how to get that. So let me show this to you right now. My favorite uh, way of using the Mach is, by the way, with the sub band. And then especially only in the mids, uh, it, it really brings out the low end. But the problem is that the mix would be way harder to get loud. But just let me play you an example of how that would sound. insane that's such a powerful band which i think starts at 10 hertz insane however less bass is easier to get loud so yeah just decrease a little bit of the bass increase a little bit of the upper mids make sure that it's not getting too harsh and too uh, unpleasant for your ears because in the end i would advise that listening experience is way more important than a number on a meter. Then next up is one of my favorite plugins at the moment, which is Ozone 11 Clarity. I've set it up again, quite extreme, 30, I would normally go for like five or 15, but in this case, we're going for 30 tilt, brighter, darker, super easy. And the standard attack and release works really, really well. You can use the mid side as well, but in this case, I love how it sounds in stereo. Let me show you what this does. It's leaving the low end alone, but it's really bringing out lots and lots of clarity. That's why the name is Clarity. What it's doing is shifting your overall balance more towards white noise. This tilt means that you can decrease the brightness it pushes towards. So at minus three, it's pink noise. And I believe that at minus six, it's called brown noise. Just understand that less is darker and more is brighter. Let me show how it sounds on this track.
of course it's way too pushed but just to show you how much difference all these processes make it's it's, it's really powerful clarity amazing sounding plugin it's super clever and yeah it's super easy to control i'm using Gulfos master as well i'm using bloom which i absolutely love but for this video i felt like clarity is is, is really cool to show why because it's super easy and it really helps into getting a tonal balance that's easier to get loud then for all the people that want to go really extreme i'm closing this video off with hard clipping let me show you what this does before the end limiter and let's try to yeah get a master that's uh, that's loud what's it doing it's hard clipping the peaks why because it feeds a more consistent signal that way into our final limiter which then has a way easier job and maintains a way cleaner sound so this is extreme i would definitely switch this to 32 if your cpu can handle it and yeah we'll push into hard clipping and we'll see how much difference it makes to the gain reduction By the way, if you're using standard clip, then what's super important is this meter. So it shows you the difference between the input signal and the processing. And it's really good to keep an eye on this so you can see what you're taking off or shaping off, I should actually say, because that's really what this plugin does. So let's go extreme. We are setting this at minus eight and just see how much gain reduction the limiter is doing. So there's almost no gain reduction happening. This would never be the setting in a real life scenario, but just to show you how it works, it's, it's really powerful. So let's set it up more towards a real life scenario. So I ended up taking a little bit out of the 40 hertz on the Mach. I'm not happy with how this master sounds. I would do it way cleaner and yeah, a little bit more dynamic to retain more of that punch. But in this case, yeah, we're just throwing a bunch of plugins on the master to make it louder. And for that, I think this video is really cool because it's really giving you a couple of options how you can achieve louder masters so that was the video about loudness i've written down some of the techniques that i wanted to show you and i've showed them to you this video wasn't as straightforward as some of the other videos i've published here but i just wanted to show you a couple of different super effective ways to achieve louder masters yeah i'm super curious to hear if you like those kind of more freestyle type videos where i'm just covering a subject and where I'm going over a couple techniques how to do that we definitely could do more videos like that such as uh, how to get way more punchy drums or how to make sure that your focal is always understandable throughout the track and then just go over a couple of different techniques to do that for me it's really a lot of fun to make and yeah I've been pushing out tons of content on TikTok and shorts and reels 
where it's really super to the point because you need to be super fast because yeah otherwise it just won't really be watched um, however on YouTube of course I can do way longer videos and go more in depth because there's not really a time limitation so yeah that's super cool um, let me know if you uh, like those kind of videos as well I'm super curious to hear that if you want to see more of those videos just make sure to subscribe and then I'll catch you in the next ones yo yo